Dude, okay, this is the most confusing thing that I saw pop up in my timeline the other day that I kind of wanted to let it play out first. I wanted to see the results and the response as to how everything went before we made a video about it. And with the Columbus Blue Jackets playing off against the Washington Capitals later today, we will see if this experiment continues further. At the time of recording this audio, we don't know what the lineup is going to look like for Columbus heading into this game. We don't know how the assembly of the lines is going to go down, and if this guy is still going to be played where he was played in the most previous game. But today we're talking about the Columbus Blue Jackets and their first line center. It's been a topic everybody has discussed over the past few years, especially with the departure of Pierre-Luc Dubois. Hey, you traded away a guy that could be, pretty much should be, your number one center in the long term. You're getting in return Patrick Laine, who's a winger. He's a big-bodied, big-stride-length, powerful, shooting, scoring winger, and... Sure, you're losing out in your center, you're getting Jack Roslevic in return, okay, he's not amazing like Dubois was, but he did have a pretty good start to his career with the Blue Jackets. However, Patrick Laine was the main piece, Laine was a winger. But give it a few years and the Columbus Blue Jackets, on their ever-long search for that number one replacement center, decided the other day to try a little experiment. You see, this team is so far out of the playoff race, they're kind of in that Bedard race instead, that you kind of have nothing to lose at this point if you're Columbus, to go out there and just try to do whatever it is the heck that you want to do. And so, a few days ago, against the Vegas Golden Knights, you had yourselves the lineup that was tweeted out by the Blue Jackets on their Twitter account, and a lot of people were starting to freak out. Because on the first line, you had yourselves Johnny Gaudreau on the left, which was pretty standard. A lot of people know he's a left-wing guy. Kirill Marchenko on the right, who is a very good young prospect, who has become a very good goal scorer too. And in the middle, on that first line, you had Patrick Laine. And a lot of people replied to these lines saying, wait a minute, what the hell are they doing? Is this like... The move? Did they make a typo here? Why is Line A listed as the first line center? And then it was confirmed by all the insiders, wait a minute, yeah, no, this is real. Patrick Line A has been moved to first line center duty for Columbus in a game against one of the better teams in the Western Conference. Now, this is the immediate reaction. I wanted to see some comments from those who replied to the tweet and those who replied to the subreddit stuff as well. The top reply on Twitter says, Line A at number one center is the first move they've made this season where I'm like, oh, we're actively tanking now. Everything else I could point to injuries and weird line deployments. It's a win-win in my opinion. Either we find out Line A is a goat C or we fail spectacularly, which helps the tank. AJ replies saying this, They saw Tage Thompson and decided to put Line A at center. That's a big dub. You have some people saying, Wait a minute, I think this is wrong. You're not going to go out there and do this. Line A as your first line center after he's been a pretty hard-nosed winger the entire past few years he's played hockey. And in fact, he did play center, and he actually had a pretty good game. This is the game score impact card for the Blue Jackets against the Golden Knights on that day. And you can see that Patrick Laine had the best game score out of everybody on the team when it comes to offense and production. And because of the game we had seen, we have articles coming out now like this one on unionandblue.com. This is the Columbus Blue Jackets version of Fan Sighted. Look at this piece published by Curtis Deem. Blue Jackets, developing Laine at center is a low-risk, high-reward move. What I wanted to do was read a little bit from this article and just kind of get a Columbus beat writer's perspective on the entire matter. Link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this piece yourself. Deem does a great job at summarizing everything. With the season well down the pipes, the Blue Jackets tried a completely different approach on Sunday in Vegas. Line A played the game as the team's top-line center, and while the results weren't perfect, it surprisingly wasn't all that bad. Line A is the second leading point scorer on the team with 50 points, though we think of him as a goal-scoring winger, best utilized with his patented one-timer shot from the left circle. We have always wanted more out of the big fin. Moving him to center may be a way to unlock the obvious potential here. 
The article goes over the history, what Line A has accomplished in the past, and then it goes over individual plays that Line A makes as a center against the Vegas Golden Knights. The tools you typically want in a scoring center are all there. Big body, he can distribute the puck, he's even been noticeably defensive this year, though admittedly he still needs some polish in that area. That being said, what better time to work on details in the defensive zone than when the season is essentially over and the games mean nothing? If the Jackets can get him dialed in on face-offs and defensive zone positioning, they could be onto something here. Nobody else has really taken the reins in that number one center role. Boone Jenner has been the best option, but in a perfect world, Boone Jenner isn't playing top-line minutes on a competing team. Roslovic is probably the most skilled center they have, but he's incredibly streaky and hasn't yet figured out the two-way nuances that will prove him a regular in that capacity. There's a little bit more thought processing going on in this article, but essentially it concludes saying, even if you ultimately move him back to the wing, a run at center might help Line better understand how to play two-way hockey. It might open up more passing options for him, or maybe he'll find some confidence in shooting from new places on the ice. It's a high-reward move, and I could even argue it's a pretty low-risk one since the season is out of reach. If that doesn't work out, you're only a few weeks at the end of the year on a meaningless season. If it does work out, Pascal Vincent might deserve a larger role himself. Now, if you go over to the game score sheet of the Vegas-Columbus matchup from March 19th, you can see that the Blue Jackets ended up losing 7-2. Not great. Johnny Gaudreau got zero points. Kirill Marchenko, though, hey, that guy got the goal and an assist, so finally, it's good to see him getting assists on the board now. And Patrick Laine had two assists on the night, too. His face-off percentage was 18, so unfortunately for him, he did not get the even share of face-offs, but it was his very first game as a center pretty much ever. I mean, look, I'm not going to pretend that I'm some Patrick Line historian here. I know the guy since he was like a child. I'm not going to say that at all. But ever since this guy was a prospect, ever since he was playing for Tapera and the Liga, ever since his days at the World Juniors, he was always a winger. Always. He took face-offs once in a while because the center would get waved out and wingers would normally take over in that capacity. But if you remove this season's worth of play, where the guy has 23 face-offs won, 48 loss for a total of, what is that, 71 face-offs on the year, he has a total of, what is that, 166 face-offs in the past seven years of his career? Like, dude, the guy has not really been doing this ever. He's almost matched his entire career's worth of face-off numbers this season alone, than he had in the prior seven years of his career. So that's kind of nutty to take a look at the transition. He has always been a winger. So having him move to number one center duty with two of the best players on the team, admittedly, in Marchenko and Gaudreau, it makes things a little bit intriguing. And apparently I saw some people talking about the idea that Line himself wanted to do this. I can't really find any tweets or whatever, but I did see some discourse going around about that. I mean, this is the top comment on the subreddit for the article we had just read. The biggest thing for me is that Line went to the coaches and wanted to try it. If he's motivated to step into that role and learns to play from it well, that's fantastic for CBJ. The wings are getting crowded in the middle, and hopefully at the top, if KJ and Marchenko continue to develop. Most of our current center prospects just don't have size on their side, including Bedard, if we do get first overall. And so, yeah, we'll see where this goes. The Blue Jackets play the Caps later today. Are they gonna play Line A at center once more? By the time this video is uploaded, the lines and everything will most likely be released, so you'll probably have your answer then, but... Either way, if you're a Blue Jackets fan and you watched that 7-2 loss against Vegas, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Line A had two assists on the only two goals the Blue Jackets scored, period. How did you think he performed at center? Did you think that he actually looked okay in that role? And do you see him getting any better? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.